Hi, welcome to the Open Frame demo. I hope you already had a technical briefing on Open Frame and are looking for a demo to understand how Open Frame operates and look at the various interfaces that are part of Open Frame solution. Then you are at the right place and let's get started. The agenda for today's demo is to look at the various key components like match, security, online, and to take a look at various tools and interfaces like OF Admin, OF Miner that are part of the Open Frame solution. And we'll also discuss the steps that are involved in a rehosting project, including source code analysis, migrating the resources from mainframe to open frame, debugging in open frame. Finally, we conclude with the technical architecture of open frame in cloud environments like AWS. Open Frame Batch provides an emulation for mainframe JS environment. It supports the native JCL syntax and it provides very detailed configuration options like defining volumes, catalogs, initiators, database connections, etc. But for the purpose of demo, we'll restrict ourselves to the commonly used functions by the developers. OpenFrame supports various technologies, including vSAM, database, that includes any relational database like DB2, UDB, Oracle, Tibero, SQL Server, and so on. And it supports various programming languages, including COBOL, EasyTrue, Assembler, PL1, Report Writer. And coming to the sort, it provides its own sort solution that is called ProSort that replaces the syntax for DF sort and sync sort. And it also provides the utilities like ice tool, IB compare, FTP, and so on. OpenFrame supports different datasets, including PS, PDS, JDG, VSAM, QSAM, and BDEM. You can edit the datasets using graphical interface, command line, or using any third party software. I'll demo all the different options for editing the dataset. And many people have a common question that how the jobs are submitted from a scheduler in OpenFrame. The answer is OpenFrame provides an interface component called TextRun that can integrate with any third party schedulers and submit a bad job. So we'll go through the sample scenario as well. Let's get started with the batch demo. OF Admin is a web-based monitoring and management tool for batch online and security systems. And now we'll look at the OF Admin and the various options that are available for batch. This is the login page for OF Admin. Here I'm logging in as administrator, that is the root user. And once you log in, you can see the various options that are available for batch. Jobs is something similar to SDSA for mainframe, where you can list all the jobs that are in this pool. You can sort it on any particular field that is available on this user interface. For example, I'm sorting based on the job ID. And you can also apply a selective filtering. For example, if you want to just search based on the job name, you can. And you can also specify the cutoff from where you would actually want to search. In this case, for example, let us say like I want to search from 256. So it lists the selective number of jobs that are present in this pool, starting from this particular job ID. And you can also look based, search based on the actual job status. For example, here I'm looking for all the jobs that are currently running. And as you can see, there are no active jobs that are currently running. And you can also look at the jobs that are successfully completed. Now let's look at a sample bad job submission in OpenFrame. There is an option called JCLs. And once you select the JCLs, it lists the different libraries where the JCLs are stored or defined in the system. Here I'm using the installation default and searching for all the JCLs that are present in the PDS. And specifically here, I'm looking for the job called DB extract, which stands for database extract. And if you look at the JCL, it basically has four different steps. And again, if you notice, uh, the syntax is exactly as it does in mainframe without making a single line of code change to the JCL. 
So again, coming back to the functionality, this job has four steps. In the first step, it's executing the utility IEFPR14, which deletes the output file or extract file from the previous run. And step 20, it's executing a program called customer inquiry, which is actually extracting the data from a database. And in this case, we actually used Chibiro database in the backend, which is a relational database, which is similar to DB2, UDB, or Oracle. And step 30, we are actually deleting the previous existing vSAM file and recreating an empty vSAM file. And step 40, we are just copying the extract from step 20 into this vSAM file. So let's look at the actual JCL. So if you look at step 10, this is the step for deleting the pre output file from the previous run. And step 20, here you are executing the utility ikjf01 for establishing the connection with the database. And this is a program that's actually it's executing. And here, uh, the configuration is very similar to ma mainframe. Here you're connecting to the database dbp1. And step 30, it's executing the IDKM's utility, which is actually deleting the vsem file and defining an empty vsem file. And step 40, we are copying the output of step 20 into the vsem file using IDKM's repro statement. Now let's go ahead and submit the job. So here I'm choosing the node. In this case, OpenFrame has only one node configuration, but in the production world, you can have multiple nodes configured for OpenFrame. So I'm submitting the job and I'm doing a confirmation yes. And here it gives a notification that the job has been submitted and the job ID is 290. Now let's go to this pool and look for the job ID. Here you can see the DB extract job 290 has been submitted and also it has been executed successfully with written code zero. And here you can look at the start time and end time. So once you select the job, it gives uh, the important information, the key information about the job, a like job ID, the user who submitted the job and the priority of this job and the node at, at which the job has been submitted and the status code of that particular job. Is it still running or is it completed successfully? And the JCL where it actually got submitted from. And here it also shows the metrics like how much uh, of amount of process time is consumed and CPU time is consumed. And it shows like class process ID. This is the Unix ID which is submitted in the back end. And this, it also shows the start time and end time. And you can also look at the step information where for each and every step, it lists all the different data sets that are being used. For example, if you look at step 20, which is actually doing the extract process, this is the output file. And you can clearly see this particular program has inserted 15 records into the output file. And these metrics are updated dynamically at the real time. Uh, and this option is not available in mainframe. So if you have a long running job that's inserting or writing millions of records, you'll be able to see clearly how many records has been read or how many records are being written to the output file. And you can clearly estimate the job end time. But this functionality is not available in mainframe. Uh, you, you can't really estimate the job completion time. And finally, spool list, it shows the uh, information about the job. For example, the JCL that was being submitted. Here you can, you can look the JCL. And you can look at the sys message for doing any debugging as in mainframe. And if you look at uh, the output, the general entries, and the way the logs are being written, it's very similar to mainframe. If the developer has experience on mainframe, they can use all the debugging skills to look at the job. So in this case, step 10, it ended with written code zero. Step 20, it ended with written code zero as well. And 30 is ID camps. And for, uh, step 40 is ID camps as well. 
and it also generates a sysout. So let's take a look at the output of step 20. So here you can see this execution of this program started and it's actually writing the records as it extracts. This completes a demo for OpenFrame Introduction and Batch Manager. Please watch the remaining videos for other topics.